As for me, in justice I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You're very welcome to the Mass today of the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who, for the faith they profess, are accounted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honour. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Go away, seer, get back to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, do your prophesying there. We want no more prophesying in Bethel. This is the royal sanctuary, the national temple. I was no prophet, neither did I belong to any of the brotherhoods of prophets, Amos replied to Amaziah. I was a shepherd, and I looked after sycamores, but it was the Lord who took me from herding the flock, and the Lord who said, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks of peace, peace for his people. His help is near to those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Mercy and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have embraced. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. The Lord will make us prosper, and our earth shall yield its fruit. Justice shall march before him, and peace shall follow his steps. Alleluia, alleluia. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. 
Jesus summoned the twelve and he began to send them out in pairs, giving them authority over the unclean spirits. And he instructed them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no haversack, no coppers for their purses. They were to wear sandals, but he added, do not take a spare tunic. And he said to them, if you enter a house anywhere, stay there until you leave the district. And if any place does not welcome you and people refuse to listen to you, as you walk away, shake off the dust from under your feet as a sign to them. So they set off to preach repentance, and they cast out many devils, and anointed many sick people with oil, and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Last Sunday, Jesus must have felt very let down when some of the locals from Nazareth cold-shouldered him. They were envious of his growing reputation as a preacher and a healer. You also get the feeling from today's first reading that the prophet Amos received similar treatment centuries before. Amos, if you remember, was told to back off and do his preaching elsewhere. In his day, that would be about 750 BC. Poor people were not receiving a fair deal from those of influence, and Amos was forever driving the message home. So they showed him the door. But there are other reasons why God's word can fall on deaf ears. Generally speaking, people don't like change and they find it hard to take on board uh, less familiar things. Perhaps we too are set in our ways. Perhaps we're too set in our ways for anything new or challenging to tempt us out of our comfort zones and live the gospel more radically. Pope Francis said recently that we must not be afraid to take risks when it comes to living the gospel. He wants us to live it more radically. The gospel is good news, but it's never the good part of the news which we object to, but the new part. When Jesus had once, once finished speaking and preaching, the people said, here is a teaching that is new and with conviction and authority behind it. This was in stark contrast to their own rabbis who used tired, worn-out formulas when teaching. Sometimes we do that as well. More of the same would ensure that they would always hold dominance over the people. Nothing would really change. Jesus, on the other hand, cared nothing for power or status, but only the truth. Even when it hit home, and the Jewish leaders at the time didn't like him for it. So, if I'm only at home with the familiar and predictable, then the unfamiliar will always be a forbidding place. If Peter had opted to stick rigidly to his fishing, he would never have left all and followed Jesus, a man he barely knew. Paul would never have ventured to go on so many hazardous missions for the sake of the gospel. And Abraham, in the Old Testament, an old man at the time, he'd never have left his homeland and embark on a very uncertain future. Closer to our time, Mother Teresa would never have left her cushy job teaching middle-class children for the slums of Calcutta. But there are other reasons why the message of the gospel may be unwelcome and not good news. When Jesus sent the apostles out on a mission, he ordered them to travel light in today's gospel. He told them to carry no haversack, no bread, and no money. Most of us are familiar with people who, when taking a holiday, 
are not happy unless their suitcases are bulging with all sorts of unnecessary things, an extra pair of this and a double pair of that. But our minds could also be cluttered up with endless trivialities that keep us from taking on board the radical message of the gospel and even less capable of responding to it. Since heaven is our destiny and the road there is narrow and winding, we must not be afraid to travel light, uncertain of what we'll find round any of its corners. Heaven, I believe, is the home of the brave and adventurous. Could I be described as one of them? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when it consumed by those who believe, they may bring even greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the Church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by the participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.